People new to 3D Coat will sometimes raise the question as to whether 3D Coat can sculpt extreme levels of detail. So I wanted to take a few moments to demonstrate that it indeed is very capable of doing so. I have a pretty dense bust that is close to 40 million polys in surface mode. A lot of that is invested in the sculpting of the hair, but I could resample it back down to around 25 million or so without losing much detail. To achieve the level of resolution I want, I can use a live clay brush with zero depth in order to locally subdivide with my brush beforehand. Another option I have is to wait until I've finished the intermediate stage of a sculpt, bake what I have to a low poly retypo mesh, and then use image-based sculpting in the paint workspace to sculpt all of these high frequency details. Nevertheless, I'll just go ahead and sculpt some skin pores with one of the brushes from the preset panel. This skin preset uses a live clay brush as its base. This skin brush preset has a number of adjustments made in the brush options panel. Those include brush rotation and radius variation, as well as position jitter. This way, a single stroke can bounce the brush around randomly while varying the rotation and the scale of the brush. I could save the same type of brush in the paint workspace as well if I elected to use image-based sculpting for this task. One might be thinking at this point, that's okay for a bust, but what about an entire model with all the secondary elements such as clothing, maybe hats, gloves, boots, or shoes, things of that sort. As with any application, a lot depends on the level of system resources one might have. The more RAM one has, the greater the number of high poly objects one can work with in a given scene. The sculpting and painting brushes are CPU multi-threaded, so the more cores, the merrier. Having a robust, newer generation graphic card will help a user move about the scene with relative ease. However, as with other sculpting applications, there are tools one can use to work more efficiently. In 3D Coat, one way to do that is to split the model into logical parts, each with their own layer, and then cache those that are not actively being worked on. This will cache the current state of the mesh onto one's hard drive, and then temporarily replace it with a lower resolution proxy. Whatever work is done on the proxy will be projected back onto the original when the user decides to uncache that layer. Just want to reemphasize this is not an attempt to do any type of production level work, just a very quick demo to show that 3D Coat is very capable of sculpting fine details like skin pores and faint skin cracks. I'll now go ahead and switch to the pinch brush, which has a dual action to it. It pinches and it indents or extrudes. By default, it's going to indent. That's a little bit large, so I'm going to undo. Change my draw mode to something that's a little bit sharper. Adjust my fall off. Reduce my brush size. I'm 
Let's turn on tapering. I want it to taper on both ends, so I'm going to change my curve here. You can click along the line to create a point. Like OK. And this is all at regular speed. I just wanted to make sure to mention that. If your model is in an intermediate stage and you want to do this type of detail, you can always switch to the crease clay brush, which is very similar, except it's going to subdivide as you're brushing. Another good option for fibers like this is to use the muscles tool located in the object section of the tool panel. It allows you to sculpt either in surface mode or voxel mode, very fine strands. You can start with large strands if you want. As you reduce your brush size down, it creates smaller and smaller fibers. And you could sculpt it on the same layer, on the same mesh, or on a completely separate layer. But for now, this will work just fine. So that's going to conclude this simple demonstration of sculpting high-frequency detail in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.